This is, as Matt said, uh, one of the biggest IPOs since Alibaba. What's your take on the opening? And are you concerned at all about leaving money on the table, given that's billions you could have taken back for the company? No, that's not how we think. We are here today because we focus on long -term, and a long-term strategy, long-term vision. We've had uh, teams and, uh, and shareholders who've been aligned with that long-term vision. Uh, I think we'll continue to stay steadfast to that DNA. So uh, people compare you to Amazon. They call you the Amazon of South Korea. What do you think of that comparison? And how do you think about your competition with Amazon? Yeah, we've, we've been inspired by a lot of companies. Uh, there are a lot of great companies that we've certainly learned from. But I think our investments are quite unique, and it's produced some unique experiences for our customers as well. So, for example, our Dawn delivery, which is enabled by our end-to-end -end integration, order as late as midnight, deliver before 7 a.m., not against the convenience store level selection, but against millions of items. I mean, you order right before you go to bed, you wake up to find it like Christmas morning every day. We also have gotten rid of classical trade-offs that you make when you uh, choose online convenience, like box packaging. 75% of our shipments today don't have any additional box packaging. And in the case of fresh groceries, we've removed uh, disposable packaging, virtually all additional disposable packaging, by instituting our eco bags. Because we're end-to-end -end integrated and our drivers are essentially picking up the empty bags on the way back when their trucks are coming back empty anyway. And that's really a result of really unique investment in not only infrastructure, but the technology that integrates it all. Bob, I have to ask you about the way you treat your workers. Jeff Bezos and Amazon have received a lot of flack for the way they treat their workers, but you have had several deaths among delivery and logistics employees who were allegedly overworked, uh, overnight working. How does the company um, answer to this issue, to these problems? You know, it's heartbreaking and it's a tragedy whenever there's a passing of one of our one of our family members. But here's the, here's the context, an important context. We have hundreds of thousands of people who work in our operations and the fulfillment and delivery. And we've had one, uh, uh, we've had one work related death in the past year. But one is too many and we have to continue to do better. We are actually leading the industry on this front. We were the first logistics service provider uh, in our industry, in our market, to, to, uh, extend, to make five day work weeks the standard versus the six day uh, standard of the industry. We're the, we're the uh, first and still the only company that offers, uh, that employs their employees directly, that offers full benefits, pay time off versus the industry standard of nearly zero. We offer insurance to all our workers, even temporary ones, on day one. So we'll, and, and with this IPO, we became the first company to make all of its frontline employees shareholders in the company. We, ha we are going to continue to lead on this front. It, it's a real concern for U.S. investors. Um, and I wonder, after reports of more than one, of several deaths of your employees, what can you do to improve the situation? As I mentioned, there are, we have to continue to change and make the standards better. We are raising the bar and we'll continue to invest. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in automation that makes not only the deliveries a uh, better experience for our customers, but makes uh, the work easier for our employees. And we are, uh, we will continue to create good jobs, uh, uh, the best working condition jobs in the country, as well as invest billions of dollars in infrastructure that extends our network deeper and deeper and closer and closer to the customers. 70% of the, co of the population lives within seven miles of one of our centers. So you can see that we're continuing to innovate on this front. Bomb, you also invested heavily to uh, keep warehouses safe through the pandemic, disinfectant, for example, the pandemic boosted growth. How has the company changed through the pandemic and what are your expectations for growth post pandemic? You know, we're not giving any uh, uh, forward guidance, but if you look at our historicals this year, you know, COVID, because we have uh, large operations, you know, COVID was uh, challenging for us. And I think our teams, because of, again, of our integration, our technology and the hard work of so many teams, we were able to maintain our delivery promise uh, to nationwide 365 days a, a year, even as delivery time stretched. And we are, um, uh, you know, we spent hundreds of millions of dollars uh, this year on, on uh, expenses that kept 
our employees safe uh, through the COVID pandemic. So how are you planning to expand? Any plans to expand overseas in the near future? What kind of new services should we be watching for? This is a $530 billion commerce market in Korea, and we're just, just getting started. We're, we, we estimate that we're about 3 to 4% of the total commerce market. So we've got a long opportunity ahead of us. We are continuing to roll out new services like stress-free returns. Uh, Emily, if you leave a parcel out uh, on, on Rocket, on our service, you don't have to put any packaging on it. Uh, you don't have to print out a label. We're, our drivers are in apart, most apartment complexes multiple times a day. So, you know, we pick it up promptly. And when we pick it up in front of your door, you're refunded immediately. That's the kind of stress that we want to remove from customers' lives. Our mission is to create a world where customers wonder, how did I ever live without coupon? And we've got such a great market in front of us and such an opportunity to change people's lives in Korea. We're going to be laser focused on it. All right, Bob, appreciate I mean, your time one, and your one candid of the things discussion. That I wanna, I wanna, one of the things yeah. I really do want to highlight, that this is really a story of Korea. This is a country that, was, that had a GDP per capita of $79 in 1960, one of the poorest countries in the world. It now has become one, a top 10 economy globally. You know, the industry and the creativity of Korea has propelled the, the miracle of the Han River, and we are just part of that story. We're so proud to be part of that story today.